welcome to the Trauma Survivorhood Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Miley, an IFS-informed certified trauma recovery coach. This show features interviews from survivors all over the world as they share their impactful story of thriving in their post-traumatic growth. We explore resources, tools, and coping skills to support the trauma survivor community. Enjoy. Welcome back to the Trauma Survivorhood Podcast. I'm your host, Sarah Miley, and I have with us today, Dr. Tara Perry. Thank you so much for joining us. She is a clinical hypnotherapist and doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. She specializes in core trauma transformation, helping people get to the root of their biggest blocks, connect to their authentic selves, and thrive in deep, confident peace. For 25 years, Dr. Perry has successfully treated celebrities, Olympians, first responders, world record holders, doctors, scientists, teachers, parents, and children. She's been featured on Lifetime Television, the LA Times, and more. For 10 years, Dr. Perry taught at the number one acupuncture college in California. And in 2000, she was chosen to be the first acupuncture teacher at the famous Arthur Ashe Center at UCLA. She hosts her own podcast as well, available on all major platforms now called Next Level Healing. Dr. Perry, thank you so much for being here with us today. I'm just going to, let's just dive right in. Tell us, Absolutely. how did you get here? 25 years, multiple decades of doing this healing work. Tell us a little bit more about your journey. Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when the universe just wants you to go in a direction, you know, you get a signal. And when God tells you to do something, you don't say no. <laughs> So I literally graduated from UCLA and went into the film business and spent five years doing that and spent the last two at the most powerful agency in Hollywood. Um, and it was uh, it's still there and still very powerful. Um, at the time, the head of it was always rated the number one most powerful guy in Hollywood. Um, and I was approached to work both for him and for the head of the television department. And after two years of being in that environment, I just felt like I was suffocating. I, I thought, you know, and people would give their left arm for the opportunity to be offered those positions. But um, I called it my homeopath one day, and I, I think I could identify the actual day. Uh, and I said, what would I do if I want to do what you do? Because I was really impressed with how he helped people and healed people. And when he told me, it's like, you know, the clouds parted. God said, this is what you're going to go do. And I mean, it was crazy. You know, it was just a, a moment of epiphany. And so um, I started night classes two years later, studying acupuncture because you need to get a, uh, you know, I was, I, I was said, you know, you need to get a license to practice medicine. So, you know, here are your choices and acupuncture is one of them in California. Um, and he said, if you want to learn how the body works, that's an excellent way to go. So two weeks later, I was in classes, a quarter later, I gave notice. And then I went to China for a year and studied at one of the top five traditional Chinese medical hospitals, which was an amazing experience. Um, in fact, um, on my podcast, I just interviewed Dr. Ming Wang, who uh, uh, escaped the Cultural Revolution in China, and uh, Universal's releasing a movie on his life this month, and he just has the most incredible life. Um, he went from honestly having to learn how to uh, how to dance and to play an instrument to not be sent to a slave labor camp. I mean, this is serious stuff. And he had to skip three grade levels to compete, to get into college. He succeeded in that. He got perfect scores on his AMCATs. Long story short, he now uh, gives surgery to children in third world countries who could, would be blind otherwise, who could not afford this otherwise. He's got multiple patents on laser technologies. Um, but uh, anyway, that he's somebody that I was able to interview as a result of the podcasting. Um, and I just never look back. I, I've been, you know, uh, I'm like you, Sarah, I'm a learnaholic. I, I want to just grab as much information. Um, you learn about things that work for people and you, you, me, um, we want want to know how does it work? Um, you know, how can I be of service? Um, because probably like you, Sarah, it, it's how do you go to bed at night if you don't feel like you did something for somebody? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so beautiful. A lot of great, beautiful opportunities for you, which is really exciting. Yeah. Really, really very extremely blessed in that way. I mean, I, I feel like one of the very rare blessed, I mean, you know, some people spend lots of the years working at jobs that they hate. I definitely went through periods like that, um, you know, where I worked my tush off for no money. Um, you know, when I was going through acupuncture school, I remember them, you know, deciding to go get coffee across the street. And I'm like, oh, I can't spend $3 on a coffee. <laughs> 
So, um, you know, there's, we go through times that are, are tight and, and hard and, and we learn from them and, you know, hope to, um, gather the tools that, um, expand us and, and make things better. Mm, I love that. The, the idea of expansion is really a powerful one. And I've, I've really felt that, um, most of this, of this year, 2023, you know, expansion is beautiful because it really tells you that you're doing something right. You're going in the right direction. Right. Uh, the, and the opposite side of that being the constriction that you feel, and you feel that just as much as you feel the expansion, um, in, in different kind of pain. So now 25 years later, so talk to us a little bit more about, um, trauma, trauma responses like shame and, and, and fear, those kinds of things that get us stuck. How does that affect someone's physical well being? Great. Awesome question. Um, so it really does kind of come down to, are you going to live in fear or, or the opposite of that, which some people would say love or expansion. I mean, it's really, um, it's kind of one or the other and, and it's a habit to default to the fear when, as you know, as a trauma specialist, um, when, when we're exposed to whatever the trauma is and what's crazy is sometimes it's something really silly. Like dad said something mean to you while you're doing your homework, um, comparing you to your sister. And, and sometimes it's something major, like, you know, you were beaten bloody into unconsciousness as a child more than once. Um, so, and it doesn't really matter what happens to us. It's our interpretation of the world, ourselves, other people that is critical for the transformation. So, um, the good news is, is, uh, that is within us. And that's why meditation is so powerful. Um, you know, breath work, uh, eating right, um, and, and, um, having the courage. Uh, I find that courage is a really important part of this process. Um, you know, I've worked with, and I'm sure you have too, Sarah, people that, you know, they have spent years just going home and crawling under the covers for the weekend because they're too afraid um, to go out in the world. And sometimes it's over silly stuff. It's not because they were beaten as children. They were just, they just got the message in their mind that they weren't good enough. Um, so it's either I, I don't have the skills to do what I need to do. I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm not worthy. I'm not good. I don't deserve it. Whatever that language is that is running in the thought tracks, you know, that's, that's the thing. And we're like very much like computers. We need to not only um, see that what's in there, but delete it and then write over it, just like you would a computer. Um, and, and that takes some focus, energy, and a, a, a good path. Um, uh, because when we're stressed, the brain naturally wants to default to what's familiar. The brain from prefers a familiar hell to an unfamiliar heaven. So that's the thing that needs to be flipped around so that your default is now to heaven. Um, uh, as some people say, you know, we have, uh, dirt roads to what we do want and super highways to what we what we uh, do want, uh, sorry, what we don't want. And so we want to flip that around and there's just methods and ways to do that. Um, it's conditioning. It's kind of like going to the gym, um, but it's kind of hard to do on your own. Uh, as we know, a lot of these problems are locked in the subconscious mind, which scientists now know is 90 to 95% of our brains. And if we're trying to kick around a, a solution in our conscious mind, you know, which is only five to 10%, which I, I do get a lot of people who have been through decades of therapy and, you know, didn't get what they wanted. Uh, Cause again, if you're just kicking stuff around the conscious mind over and over and over again, it, it doesn't create those new neural pathways, which you, you need for success. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So you were trained in RTT, which stands for rapid transformational therapy. You call it core transformation now, but tell us a little bit about what that, what that looks like when you're working with a client doing RTT or, or core transforming stuff. Right. So I'm, I'm a bit of a hybrid, um, because I've had 25 years of acupuncture and nutritional medicine. Um, I, I studied, studied energy work with, um, master Coe's teacher, uh, master Shoa, And, um, that's also got some very interesting science and, and merit to it. Um, like you, Sarah, I'm very interested in, the, in science, uh, you know, not, Unfortunately, you got to be really careful about whose science it is. If there's a big marketing department behind it, that science gets skewed really bad. Um, you can pay, unfortunately, for science, and um, it seems impressive. But um, having in my doctoral studies, you know, a lot of uh, uh, 
knowledge of how studies are formed and, and what it takes to have a quality study. A study by itself means nothing. Um, you have to look at internal and external validity, bias, you know, all kinds of things because so many things can throw off um, the result. So, um, uh, but but I, I love people like Joe Dispenza. I know you're into Joe as well. He's looking at uh, blood results, uh, brain waves. Uh, he's even measuring tears now. And what's so cool about it is the scientists that he basically had to beg to look at the blood samples. They're now sitting in his lap panting, going, I'm so excited we're studying this because they've never seen anything like it. it they're like, they're, there's no drugs that do this. It's It's got such fabulous results for the people that participate. Um, and the great news is, is it's free. Um, you know, you, you can just go online and listen to a Joe Dispenza meditation or any meditation that you like, um, you know, find what works for you. But if you can get still and quiet and go to those places that hurt, um, and instead of resisting them and trying to push them down and run away from them, if you can go into them and just really feel them, my meditation teacher says, you know, let them open up like a flower in the sun. Um, a lot of meditation teachers describe it as a knot in inside of you. And uh, but again, if you if you go into the knot and and let it unfold and just deal with whatever the feeling is that's there, that is a, another route to releasing that stress and trauma. Um, so yes, I am a, again, I'm a bit of a hybrid cause I've studied, you know, hundreds of hours with Joe Dispenza, hundreds of hours with Tony Robbins. Um, I did train personally with Marissa Peer. Um, and, and there's just, I say, we stand on the shoulder of giants today where there's a lot of great, great people doing great work. And I think the discernment part is really important, um, to find somebody that you feel like resonates with you, that you, you know, pricks up your ears and you go, oh yes, I've heard the results from these people. Um, you know, if you go on YouTube, you can type in Dispenza and just about anything and stuff's going to pop up. Um, that's why I got into recording the results with my people because, uh, I, I just want people to know, look, there's, there's, there's hope. There's, there's a solution. You don't have to suffer. You really don't, but you do have to have good discernment. Make sure that you're with somebody that you're vibing with, that doesn't want to control you, doesn't want to, you know, have you sign up for a program for the rest of your life. Um, uh, you know, that really wants you to be free. Yeah. Yeah, that the, they want a results based reality for you. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you're working with trauma survivors and you're saying, you know, going into those places that are really scary or that hurt you or that created pain or shame, mm. how are you creating safety there with your clients when they're going into those places so that they can feel it to release it? Right. Because a lot of dysregulation happens when when we're going in that deep, especially for, you know, if you've had trauma. Yeah. It's almost like going to the dentist. Um, you know, it doesn't, it may not be totally pleasant the whole time, but, um, you know, you do get Novocaine and, you know, or you can, or you can get knocked out. Uh, well, you do actually have to be awake for this process, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you're in a very relaxed state and, um, you know, nothing can hurt you. Um, you, you just review the, the trauma. You don't have to relive it. So it's not about getting in there and banging pillows and yelling and screaming at people. It's just feeling the feeling enough so that you can go, oh yeah, okay, that's what it is. And, and being able to communicate, you know, that's what it wants. That's what it needs. And so, you know, what's so crazy uh, sometimes at the end of the, the, the process, and, and I've just, I've had this happen multiple times when somebody really communicates with that thing that they've been wanting to get rid of for three decades, sometimes longer, sometimes, you know, 50, 60 years, all of a sudden when they, they, they see what it is and they realize, oh, it's just an injured part of me that needs a little bit of, of, of love and protection and, and care. It doesn't want, it doesn't, they don't want to let it go anymore. <laughs> They're like, oh, that's my friend. I want to keep it. And it's like, okay, well you can actually let it go and live in happiness and peace and joy. And, and you yourself can live in happiness and peace and joy. You don't actually have to feel um, anxiety. You don't have to feel limited. You don't have to feel less less than you don't have to feel guilty. You don't have to feel shame in order to be validated because again, that's the brain. It wants to go back to the familiar and, and it's going to keep doing that because it thinks that's safe until it learns otherwise. 
Yeah, very true. Uh, yeah, all, all of my listeners who know that I practice IFS, they're going to love that little part. It is, it's that little part of you. And then you find out it's just this like, little unhealed little child in there. And it's not so scary after all. Um, and that's, that's always a beautiful part of that transformation process. So what would you say would be an obstacle, um, that your clients have? So when they're feeling unwell, they're experiencing pain, they're just, they're not mentally in a great space. What's a, what's an obstacle that they're facing in seeking that healing that, that they, that they need that can happen so quickly as, as yeah, that's, that's another excellent question. I would say two things. One is fear. Um, and, and the fears, um, I have a a dear friend who, uh, I was kind of doing some marketing, uh, uh, just test questions with, and she does live in, she used to live in a lot of fear. She's actually doing a lot better now, but, um, you know, people are afraid of, uh, seeing things within themselves that they think would be unacceptable, that they would be like, oh my gosh, I'm really not good enough. Oh my God. I'm really not worthy. Oh my God. I'm really not whatever. Um, so you know, and and the good news is, is when you see the truth, you know, it's always, you're more and better and, and better equipped and, and, and more of everything than you gave yourself credit for. (laughs) Yep. I I think one of the strengths of what I do and what you do is that um, it's very customized Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, yeah. I don't, I, it's not one size fits all. I, I don't work with lots of people. It's just very customized. And I love it that way. I want, you know, I want to work with somebody that's clear. I want to go from here to here. You know, this is my starting point. This is my end point. And I, I say, I feel like Glenda and the good witch because the, the good witch and the wizard of Oz, cause I'm not giving you anything you don't already have. I'm just making apparent what you have been seeking. Um, it's there in front of you, but the other obstacle, Sarah, is that um, people are so deluged with information and so much of it is bad. Yes. So sorting through the information, and I have always felt so terrible for the average person because I, I've been blessed with, you know, I grew up in a family that kind of knew what's what in terms of exercise and nutrition. So I got a great start that way. And then um, I left an industry that was very toxic um, just because God and his great wisdom pointed me in the right direction. I'm not even a particularly, I wasn't raised a religious person, but as you go down this path, you know, you, when you start meditating and you feel your energy, it's like, oh, wow, this, this isn't me. This is something bigger than me. Um, And I just interviewed Mark Gober, who wrote the best book on consciousness that I've ever read. He was a materialist, um, went to Princeton, graduated top of his class, was head of the tennis team, then went to work on Wall Street, made a ton of money. But he, he was a materialist until he started studying all this stuff. And now he scientifically quantifies beyond what anybody previously thought was even possible, um, what this energy is, um, what this consciousness is, what is this thing that connects us all and moves us all and motivates us all? And and how do we make the most of that? How do we connect with each other, you know, the world, the planet, other people, um, and really uplift everyone? Because if we're all part of this same thing, we really all want the same thing for each other, um, which is that freedom, that, that expansion, that love, that connection. Um, Zach Bush is another favorite of mine and he's very much on that pathway. He was a leading oncologist who started asking better questions. You know, if you want better answers, you have to start asking better questions. So that's part of this whole journey too. But it's, uh, so number one, I would say is fear. Number two is discernment. Yeah. How do you discern what is good and helpful from what isn't? Um, and um, I, I'm going to quote the Bible. <laughs> Again, I wasn't raised with religion, but Jesus said a few cool things, uh, a lot of cool things. And he said, uh, you will know them by their fruits. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I think that is a phenomenal quote. I love wisdom from whatever culture it comes from. And because uh, uh, I think truth is truth. And if you want to know if something is good or not, look at the results that you get when you apply it. And again, Joe Dispenza very much that same way. If you, if you apply this process, um, if you learn how to meditate, if you up level your heart and brain coherence, which is a heart math thing, which you're, I'm sure you're familiar with. In fact, you can even get a device from heart math that, that 
tells you whether you're in coherence or not. And the physical, mental, emotional outcomes from being in coherence, which is that nice relaxed state, that nice parasympathetic state where your immune system is functioning, your hormonal system is functioning, your digestive system is functioning. One of the magics, magic of, of what I do, I, I feel is that I'm very good at helping people turn that sympathetic mode into parasympathetic because if the fire alarm is going off in your house all the time and you, you don't know how to turn it off, you don't know where it is, you don't know what it's doing, you don't know what it's telling you, then you're helpless and it, you, you get exhausted. Um, you feel hopeless. Um, you just tune out, um, in severe cases, you just get numb. I mean, a really advanced trauma person is just going to say, look, I don't know what I feel. Yeah. Well, that's a feeling you feel numb and it's trying to accomplish something. It wants you not to suffer. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's so true. Yeah. You and I are very similar in, in that regard in working with, with clients and customizing for them. I, and I wholeheartedly agree with this deluge of information because literally you can find the same podcast with two different guests. One says something about intermittent fasting that's scientific and scientifically proven. And then the exact opposite about intermittent fasting that is scientific and scientifically proven data driven. Right. And it's like, it's exhausting. And I saw this billboard uh, when I was in Boston over the weekend and now I'm going to have to look it up because I felt like I was going to quote it and I don't know what the actual advertisement, but I'm stealing it right now. I'm going to be honest about it. Um, it said lots of, I think it was like insurance or something, lots of options with lots of help to help you decide. And I thought that is like my new program called the personalized trauma healing system, because the world is so full of like, you want to work on, I, I work on specific pillars of lifestyle design. So say it's sleep, say it's a relationship, say it's a job, career, dreams, et cetera. But it's this idea of like, there is so much out there and 99.9% .9 of it is not going to work for you or be for you or align to your ethics or your morals or your personal standards and goals. How can we take all the information and start chopping it down. Well, we can do it together. And so I love that word, the customization that you use, I call it personalized, but you have, you have to customize your own self-care regimen. You have to customize, be self-focused and say, intermittent fasting works for all these other people, but I don't like it, or it doesn't work for me or this medical condition or low blood sugar, please do not intermittent fast if you have low blood sugar. Right. So these things have to be customized to your clients. And I, I love, and I respect that, that you do that for your clients because you and I are very, we have very similar mindsets like that. I know you talk a lot about finding the root cause of people suffering. How do we, well, I guess maybe why is it so important to find the root cause of someone's suffering? Why not just treat the suffering? Why not treat the, the, the symptoms of the suffering? Another fabulous question. Mm -hmm. So that actually is one of the cornerstones of Chinese medicine. Um, it's called root and branch theory. Um, so, you know, back when I started acupuncture school, uh, a long time ago, <laughs> um, you know, we, we were always taught to go for the root because, you know, if you're gardening and you just take a weed and take out the plant the leaves or you know the top of it it'll just grow right back so you always want to get to the root um you know where did it come from how did it originate uh and then when you can deal with that um and i, I would say r remove it or reprogram it um you, you know I, I actually own the domain name brain aikido uh you know what aikido is it's a martial arts where you, when, when, when somebody attacks you you don't you don't meet it with resistance. In fact, one of my clients the other day called me up and he said, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I just had something come up with me. And it's like, it's this, I feel like I'm battling this thing. And, you know, I, 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 it keeps coming up in my meditations. And I said, well, do me a favor and just try not fighting it and just find exactly where it is in your body. You know, where's it hanging out and then go right into the middle of it and just see what's there, hang out with it and allow it to open like a flower in the sun, in the sun, allow it to unravel like a knot that was super, super tight. And he texted me a couple of days later. He says, it's working great. <laughs> yes. And, yeah. and again, you have to, you have to dance with things. You have to work with things. And that's why working with a person that can help guide you. In fact, I was just on a call the other day with a program that I signed up for. And he says, you know, even coaches need coaches. Yes. You know, it's, it's, and there's no shame in that. It's like, if you're a fish in water, you know, you can't always evaluate. And some of the smartest people are the longest, you know, running, not getting help because they, 
and I am in that category as well. It's like, you know, if you think you're smart and solve everybody else's problems, you don't realize, oh, I'm having an issue that I'm not solving. <laughs> Yes. So if you're constantly rubbing up against a feeling an emotion, whatever, and, and sometimes they're just so deep, you don't see them for the longest time. And it can be unworthiness, guilt, shame, which is so present in our world, unfortunately. Yeah. In Gosh. fact, I think I heard an interview with the Dalai Lama or somebody like him, maybe it was Thich Nhat Hanh or something. And uh, the, the, the interviewer said, uh, you know, the, the self hatred that is so prevalent in American society is that, you know, do you guys have that in your world as well? And he's like, no, that is kind of an American thing or a Western thing. Uh, so, so I, I don't know that that's human nature globally, but certainly in our world. And I think probably, I hate to say it, but I think advertising has played a huge role in that. I think, I think the, the goal of, of television and radio to sell you stuff it can't sell you stuff until it first makes you believe you're not adequate. Yeah. Yeah. So I we know. have that just everywhere. I mean, it's on our cell phones. It's, you know, one of my biggest advices to people is just turn the news off <laughs> yeah. because it's there. There's the saying, if it bleeds, it leads. Its job is to scare you, to disempower you and to make you need them. Um, and fortunately the ratings for so many of these things is, is plummeting because people are going to other sources like podcasting yes. because you're motivated by helping people, yeah. you know, yeah, and, absolutely. um, and nobody is paying the bills so that you have to tow that party line. And as soon as that happens, as soon as somebody is making a lot of money and somebody's paying the bills for them, they have to do what that entity wants them to do. Yeah. For sure. You know, and self-loathing or really, really deep-seated shame that people have, you know, when, when they come and they're working with me, like my private clients, a lot of trauma survivors struggle with feeling guilty. They feel like it was their fault. They feel like they could have done something better and their self-worth really, really plummets because of it. But when they're struggling with that, it's just a great reminder, like, uh, you came to me. So there's a part of you that worries about your self-worth. But the overarching real centered self knew enough that you're worth coming to get help, that you want to work through this and you want to heal, right? Yeah. And I would like to chime in on that because what is so noticeable, I find, is that so many people come in that feel completely unworthy. I mean, completely unworthy. And then when we start ticking off the boxes about all of the characteristics that they embody so beautifully... I mean, the people that are seeking help that feel horrible, I would say the vast majority of the time, if not all the time, they're the loving people, the caring people, the honest people, the, the ones that'll be there for you when times are tough. I mean, they're really sweet, amazing people. And I'm like, once we check all those boxes and they're like, yeah, I'm that. Yeah, I'm that. Yeah, I'm that. Yeah, I'm that. Well, isn't that who you want to be your doctor? Isn't that who you want to be your lawyer? Isn't that who you want to be the your contractor? Isn't that who you you want to be the person that is in the most valuable positions in your life. And then they can just start to open the door and like, oh, maybe I'm not the big, horrible person that I thought I was because that got programmed in when you were a child being mistreated or, or whatever was happening back then. But again, it's, it doesn't matter what happened to you. It's the story you created in your brain about that incident. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Dr. Perry, thank you so much for being here today. Um, I always like to ask all of my guests before we wrap up, um, what are some um, resources that you have in your personal life, in your healing journey, uh, maybe that helps you stay regulated when you're working with your clients that you kind of rely on as, as your, your resources? There are so many, um, like you, I'm a learnaholic and have been for decades. So it all starts to add up. I'm starting a section of my website called, um, Tara's Tuesday book review. Um, so there is a section of my website that also has a bunch of books that I'm, um, cause I have got like over 400 books on my audible account. Um, you know, I devour information just cause I find it so interesting. It's like, Wow. It's like a candy store for me. So uh, personally, um, oh, and if any of your listeners go on my website and um, just 
message me. Um, I, I will gift them a meditation that I just did recently. It hasn't been released yet. It's just a way to unzip the, the personality that you're believing that you are and, and stepping out of that into something bigger and freer and, and people are really liking it. So I'm happy to give that to your listeners. Awesome. Um, and uh, personally, uh, tools, meditation, for sure, nutrition. I find that over the years, I, I'm constantly up leveling my nutrition. I stopped drinking alcohol a few years ago about two and a half years ago, um, just because I, I started looking at the list and it's like, okay, well, this is what it's costing me. And this is what it gives me. And it's the, the scale started to look like that. And I'm like, uh, I don't think I want that anymore. Yeah. So up level, up level your life, up level the people that you hang around with, what you listen to each and every day, make sure that it's valuable. If you just come home, turn the news on and that's going all the time in the background. Good Lord. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's messing you up. <laughs> um, so uh, some kind of exercise for sure. Uh, good eating, uh, clean water. Uh, I I'm into cold therapy. Uh, you know, I haven't done a ton of it, but Vim Hof is amazing. If you just go on YouTube and type in Vim Hof 11 minute breathing, I think close to 70 million people around the world have done that breath work is super powerful. So just, and don't get overwhelmed, just pick a few things that up level your world, start applying them. And then once you start, your nervous system starts to realize, oh, my life is better with this stuff. It starts to become an automatic habit. And once you can stop thinking about that and it's an automatic habit, then you can start putting your attention on the new automatic habits that you want, but don't overwhelm yourself. Yes. Yes. Amen. Please do not overwhelm yourself. You can very easily if you're not in a very, you know, self-controlled kind of way and making sure it fits for you. I, I love that. Um, yeah. So tell people where they can find you. Thank you so much for telling us about the, um, the meditation that you have that you're offering people. So they have to email you for that. Um, but tell us where they can find you, where they can find your podcast. So uh, if you go on consult Tara, T-A-R-A, -A, uh, you'll find me. I'm also at nashvillehealer.com and at removethepain.com. So any of those will get you to my website. And then just um, if, if, you, if you're interested in working with me, just click on the let's talk thing. And there's about 10 questions there and we can start to see if we're, this is a good fit for you. Um, and then, or you can just go to the comment section and say, hey, I'd like the um, free meditation and I will happily get that to you. Thank you so much. And um, your podcast is called Next Level healing they can check that yeah. out with any of the podcasts whatever directory they, directory they use are you on iheart and yep. google all and them. apple and all that and they're also available on your and website. it's also on the website excellent excellent dr tara perry thank you again for joining us i appreciate it. you have a great rest of your day sarah thank you so much for the good work that you're doing i really appreciate you having me on today yeah same right back at you thank you again all right take care of yourself Thank you for listening to or watching this episode of the Trauma Survivorhood podcast. Please subscribe, like, share, and follow. For any information that was discussed in this podcast episode, check out the show notes below. Until next time, be well.